Hello, I'm Ross, and I am a living contradiction. I'm a black albino. I have white skin, blonde hair, and hazel eyes. I can't be exposed to the sun and have very poor vision. No one predicted a happy life for me when I was born, but my aim in life was to prove that they were all wrong. My first and most obvious problem is that I'm nearly blind. I have constant rapid eye movement and can't read anything without a lens. And I have problems with depth of vision and hand-eye coordination. When I was born, doctors and social workers prepared my mom at once that I most probably would have the same limitations as blind people for my entire life. Apart from that, I had to face other difficulties. While I was growing, I was very lonely. It's all about stereotypes, but I came from a black family in the black district, and I had a mixed school. And even if it doesn't sound fair, at some point you needed to be either with black guys or with white guys. Where did I belong? Unfortunately, black kids supposed I was white. With my white skin and blonde hair, it's quite logical. And white kids turned me away because, in fact, I was black. This left me totally alone. No friends, no guys to hang out with, and nearly no identity. I had to adapt. The good thing was I was never bullied. I was so obviously different from everyone else that there was no point in underlining it even more. There was another side. All the teachers knew that I had very poor vision, and feeling sorry for me, they tried to make my life easier. Too easy for my taste. For example, I was always the last one to be asked, even if I was quite good at studies. Maybe they thought that it was hard or scary for me to talk in front of everyone. But you know, as soon as no one was actually mean against me, at some point when I was growing I wanted to be more socialized. You remember, no one accepted me as equal. But I thought that maybe sports might be something that I could do that would unite us. But what sports could I do? My PE teacher made me do something very simple separately from the others. Some basic fitness, nothing really exciting. While all the others were playing football, basketball, or other team games I was excluded from. However, once I decided that the time had come to be integrated, I asked my PE teacher, Could you let me play with everyone? The game was very simple, something like football or rugby, but very simplified. Nothing I couldn't manage, in fact. So the coach was in doubts for just a second and, and said, Why not? Give it a try, at least. I saw the sour expressions of my teammates, but I ignored them. At the first whistle, we started running, and my teammates took the ball. It was big and red. I didn't have any problems seeing it, but unfortunately I had some problems with depth, which means I wasn't very good at defining distance between myself and the ball. So the guy in front of me passed me the ball. I saw it perfectly, but didn't calculate well, and stopped it with my face. Everyone was laughing, and I was as well. It was really funny. The PE teacher wanted me to stop, but I insisted I retry. After a couple of attempts, I was much better and managed to catch the ball and pass it on to my more athletic classmates without any problems. And what's more important, I felt accepted to the group and enjoyed pushing the limits I was in for my entire life. That ball game changed my way of thinking. I stopped waiting passively to be accepted and took initiative to become more social. Sports became my way out of it. I played rugby and soccer and broke quite a number of bones in judo. I knew I wasn't born to do those things, but I didn't want to live the destiny that was predicted at my birth. I wanted a full life like everybody else. I found my first friends with sports. It turned out there are lots of people who don't care whether you are black or white and cheer you even if you are not very good at sports. After a couple of years, I had a group of four friends who cared a lot about me. It was a pleasure I couldn't dream of when I was small. And when I was 15, they started talking about finding a girlfriend for me. I mean, I didn't have any illusions about being handsome, but my friends insisted they would definitely find a girl for me because they all had girlfriends and I was the only single one among them. One day, one of them was approached by one of his neighbors who asked about me. It seemed that she liked me. Cool. The only point they said was that she had very poor vision, like me. I didn't care. First, we would understand each other better, and then I would scare her less with my looks. So my friends organized my first date. The girl was hilarious. We were laughing all the time. She was so funny. I also was amusing. I thought that we had chemistry between us. The only strange thing was that she didn't ask me about what it was like to be a black albino. If you see a person like that, it's so natural to ask questions. I decided to ask her. Maybe she just didn't want to offend me. When I asked her, she looked puzzled. What do you mean, albino? 
Are you both black and albino? I just thought you were white. I have poor vision, you know. It was so funny, we both started laughing like crazy. Now, I have a wonderful girlfriend and the coolest friends on Earth. You remember the limitations I was given at my birth? No way. Of course, the life of a black albino is not easy from a medical and social point of view, but it's all about attitude. As soon as I decided that I don't need any pity or limitations, I indeed stopped needing them. And it was the first huge step I made towards happiness.